in this video we are going to be talking about the startup segment startup segment is very unique they have very unique erp needs so let's get to it Everyone, my name is Sam Gupta and I am principal at Elevate IQ. Elevate IQ is the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. We help our clients with ERP selection, ERP contract negotiation, ERP project recoveries, as well as ERP implementation. So let's get back to today's topic, which is going to be the ERP systems for startups. Before we get to the list, let's discuss the criteria that we typically use to compile this list. So first off, the startup companies are going to have less than $5 million in revenue, and they are probably going to have less than 10 employees. Typically, in these companies, founders are leading most of the functions, and they might have one to two employees for each of the functions, including your accounting, purchasing, and operations. And their implementation budget is probably going to be less than $30,000. Now, that's a very low budget. So you don't want to overcommit yourself for the larger implementation. You don't want to be implementing the product that are going to require far higher implementation budget, or they might be overly complex for you as the startup. The other factors that we look for uh, in compiling this list is going to be the market share, the ownership, the funding. Uh, how cloud native and how easy that solution is going to be. And we look at the ecosystem, how many startups are really hanging out in their ecosystem. And then industry functionality, the diversification of the solution, whether the solution can support the needs of many different business model, because in general, startups tend to have very complex business models, even though they might not have as much revenue, but they might have very different, very complex business model because they have not gone through the process of the standardization of the business model. We also look at the acquisition strategy of the company and if they have been acquiring a lot of companies to fill the holes in the startup space, then they are probably going to be ranking higher on our list. So let's get to the list. Number 10 on our list is going to be a product called Sage Intact. And Sage Intact is targeted for slightly bigger companies overall in the SMB segment. It's not really the right product for the startups because it can appear very overwhelming. It will require consulting support overall because of the, the data model and the product model. It's slightly more complex than some of the other easier products that can be implemented in the DI by mode. Now, for the Sage Intact, the startups will find the ERP capabilities to be deeper. It's going to be ideal for service-centric uh, startups, and uh, the multi-entity consolidation needs are going to be far higher, even though most startups should not worry about the multi-entity consolidation needs, because that is going to require far more consulting effort. Uh, it will require higher consulting dollars overall in setting that up, in managing that, so probably so that's why Sage Intact is probably not the right product for the, the startups. Now, the weakness for Sage Intact is going to be that it will require the consulting help to be able to set up. And when you have the budget of $30,000, Sage Intact may not be the best product for you. The product is going to feel very overwhelming for the startups just because they are not used to of using ERP systems unless the founder comes from very strong manufacturing distribution background, then they'll probably appreciate the ERP functionality. But let's say if you have the e-commerce startup or some sort of you know service startup where the founder did not really have any experience on the previous ERP systems, then they will not appreciate the ERP features that Sage Intact is going to offer. Also, Sage Intact is going to have very limited operational functionality that is probably the most critical for the startups. Having said that, Sage Intact is a, a potential product that you should be including in your list when you are evaluating these products, especially if you are a service-based 
the startup and that's why it ranks at number 10 on our list number 9 on our list is going to be the product called cispro and cispro is targeted for the fnb food and beverage distributors and the manufacturers startups and the strength of cispro is going to be it's ideal for the food and beverage distributors as well as manufacturers uh, the other strength for cispro is going to be it's going to have very deep supply chain and distribution functionality that you are not going to find in other products such as odoo or zoho the data model is comparable to uh, products such as your acumatica netsuite it's going to be far richer than your odoo or or zoho the weakness for cispro is going to be it's also going to require consulting help even though it might be slightly easier than acumatica or netsuite but cispro will still require consulting help to be able to set up and it will feel overwhelming for startups so again if you have $30000 in budget cispro might not be the best product for you also with cispro it's not it wasn't born in the cloud it's a legacy product even though they have rearchitected the product so you might face a lot of technical issues that probably may feel overwhelming when you are in the startup phase that said cispro is still a very strong product for some of the distribution or the fnb centric startups and you should include that as part of your list for evaluation and that's why it ranks at number 9 on our list now number 8 on our list is going to be product called netsuite and netsuite is ideal for b2c distribution companies based on its data and the product model netsuite also has very deep wms capabilities and they have very friendly professional services model they have the implementation plan for as low as $30000 that you can get from netsuite now the challenge with netsuite is going to be netsuite in general is a very expensive product so even though they have figured out a model for the startups and you have the entry price for the startups it gets very expensive so when you are in the startup phase when you are under 5 million dollar revenue and your gross margin is probably going to be a couple of $100000 netsuite could be extremely overwhelming for you in the startup phase and you will definitely require the consulting help otherwise you have much higher chance of the implementation failure if you are going to be implementing netsuite by yourself having said that netsuite is still a very strong product for the startup especially if you have funding and you don't have to worry about the implementation budget the netsuite could be a potential product and that's why it ranks at number 8 on our list now number 7 on our list is going to be product called acumatica acumatica is going to be slightly easier than netsuite because in terms of size acumatica is a smaller product overall but still if you look at the strength of acumatica it's designed for manufacturing distribution and construction companies especially for the b2b business models acumatica is a better fit the product model the design of the product is very friendly for b2b companies some of the advantages of acumatica for the startups is going to be it offers a lot of integration out of the box for example shopify integration or the big commerce integration so you don't have to worry about those integrations at least you can buy this on some of these in- integrations right on acumatica's papers and that's a huge plus for acumatica the other plus for acumatica is going to be it's cloud native so you are going to get far deeper mobile capabilities the cons for acumatica are going to be similar to netsuite which means it's going to be too big for a startup definitely would require consulting help to be able to set up and $30000 may not be enough for acumatica implementation unless you are implementing acumatica let's say only for accounting then it's a different case if you are trying to utilize acumatica as quickbooks then it's a different case also acumatica has very limited presence outside of north america so it might not even be an option if your startup is going to be outside of north america having said that acumatica is still a very strong product for some of these startups and that's why it ranks at number 7 on our list <laughs> Number 
six on our list is going to be a product called ERP Next. And if you're not familiar with ERP Next, it's the open source product similar to Odoo. And it is the, the strength of ERP Next is going to be, it's ideal for companies that want to implement an ERP in the DIY mode, especially if you might have a little bit of internal programming expertise, then ERP Next it could be a great fit for you. For example, let's say if you are an e-commerce shop and you already have a programmer on your staff, or let's say if you are the industry 4.0 startup, then again, ERP Next could be a potential product that you might want to include as part of your evaluation. ERP Next is going to be ideal for distribution and service-centric startups. Its manufacturing functionality is going to be uh, limited than some of the other products on this list. And then uh, the other plus that we have for ERP Next is going to be it's open source. Open source does not mean that it's going to be completely free. You are still going to be paying for the infrastructure, but at least you might not be paying as much for the licensing. And that could be a huge help for some of these startups. The cons for ERP Next compared to some of the other products on this list is going to be its ecosystem is not going to be as strong as, for example, if you compare this with Odoo or Zoho. The reliability of the consultants could be questionable as well because of the nature of open source, a lot of developers, programmers who might not have business background in terms of how business is supposed to work, they might over customize the product. And because of that, you might develop the processes that might fire back overall in the long term. So you might uh, need to be cognizant of that. But in the startup phase, when you don't have a lot of implementation budget, ERP Next could still be a very a great product for you. Having said that, ERP Next is a great product for the service centric and the distribution startup. And that's why it ranks at number six on our list. Now, number five on our list is going to be ECI Makola product. And this is from the company called ECI. So some of the strength for ECI Makola is going to be deeper functionality overall for distribution and light manufacturing. And one of the advantages that you are going to get with ECI is that it's PE bagged. So at least the financial stability of the publisher is not as questionable as with the other products that we have on the list. The data model is going to be extremely rich and the product architecture is, is, is fairly rich as well for the startups. And it's not going to be as overwhelming as for example, NetSuite or Acumatica, it's smaller in size compared to, for example, let's say if you compare this with SysPro, that's probably the right comparison for ECI Makola. Some of the weaknesses for ECI Makola is going to be similar to the other products that we mentioned on the list, which is going to be, you will still require the consulting help. It's not as easy as your Odoo or Zoho or ERP Next uh, and 30,000 uh, implementation budget may not be sufficient and you might run into the implementation failure risk and that could be that could fire back for your startup the product might feel overwhelming for the startup just because the product is, is still uh, more complex than some of the other erp systems that we have on the list and you might not have as much last mile functionality that you are going to find with some of the other products that we have uh, on this list having said that eci makola could still be a very uh, strong product for distribution centric companies and that's why it ranks at number five on our list ECI Job Boss 2 is targeted for smaller startup job shops that might be under $5 million in revenue. Now, the strength of ECI Job Boss 2 is going to be that you are going to get the last mile functionality that is required for job shops. Job shops will be able to relate with the product far more than they will connect with products such as, let's say, uh, Makola or SysPro. The advantage with Job Boss 2 is going to be that it is PE backed and it is trying to draw the feature of the old Job Boss product as well as other uh, ECI product that we had that is far richer overall in the capabilities in the on-prem world. And ECI is trying to bring all of that cap all of those capabilities as part of the ECI Job Boss 2. So ECI Job Boss 2 is going to become a rich product for these smaller job shops. The other advantage that we have with the ECI Job Boss 2 is going to be the simpler interface for the startups. They will be able to relate with the product far more than, especially when we talk about job shops, 
then they will relate with some of the other products. Now the con with ECI Job Boss 2 is going to be, let's say if you're outgrowing $5 million, even before that, you might feel that you are limited in capabilities. You are limited with the amount of data that you are going to get about your processes. You might be spending a lot more time overall in the admin effort, but that might be okay when you are in the startup phase. The other con for ECI Job Boss 2 is going to be that it's not going to be as diverse as some of the other products such as either Makola or uh, Acumatica, and then not fit for other manufacturing or distribution vertical. It's really designed for job shops. So that's going to be a con for Job Boss 2 product. Having said that, ECI Job Boss 2 is still a very strong product for startup job shops, and that's why it ranks at number four on our list. <music> Number three on our list is going to be a product called ECI DCOM. ECI DCOM is targeted to the startup process manufacturing companies, for example, food and beverage, pharma, life sciences, any of the uh, process centric verticals. That's where ECI DCOM really shines. The strength of ECI DCOM is going to be that it has simpler interface and the simpler ERP functionality that can be easily implemented in DIY mode. It's going to be a simpler product than your Acumatica or NetSuite and will not require as much consulting help as you are going to need with Acumatica or NetSuite, but the consulting help is still going to be required. For example, if you compare ECI DCOM with Odoo, Odoo is going to be far simpler product than your ECI DCOM. It's not going to have as many bells and whistles that you are going to find with some of the other products such as Acumatica. The other challenge that we have with ECI DCOM is going to be, it's, it's not as diverse uh, as some of the other products that we have on this list and the community overall and the install base is going to be very small. Having said that, ECI DCOM is a very strong product and you are going to get far deeper uh, process manufacturing functionality packaged as part of the same solution. Uh, and that's why it ranks at number three on our list. <music> Number two on our list is going to be a product called Zoho. And Zoho is targeted for slightly more service-centric organizations. And the strength for Zoho is going to be that it has a lot of different integrations. For example, Zoho CRM uh, is really targeted for service-centric organizations. And it has very, it has a HCM product that is also targeted for the service-centric organizations, such as your marketing agency, software development firms, uh, the law firms. Uh, it's going to be any of the media firms. These are some of the companies that will really enjoy Zoho because they don't need as deep operational functionality, the ERP functionality. And Zoho is going to be far simpler. It can be easily implemented in that $30,000 budget. Uh, so it's it can be, it's a great product for those service centric startups. The con for Zoho is going to be, it's going to have weaker capabilities overall for manufacturers and distributors, especially if you are going to outgrow that $5 million mark, that's when you are going to feel that Zoho is limiting. And the ERP capabilities overall are going to be limiting. It's really designed for the startup phase so that you can implement it easily in the DIY mode. And for that reason, Zoho ranks at number two on our list. <music> Number one on our list is going to be Odoo. And Odoo is targeted for the startups, uh, especially the startups that want to implement the product in the DIY mode. It's really ideal for companies that might already have the programming background. And some of these companies are going to be e-commerce centric companies, industry 4.0 companies. It might not be ideal for all the companies because they might not have as much IT maturity programming background. So it's not the product for everyone, but it's definitely a product for the, the startups that want to implement in the DIY board. The other strength for Odoo is going to be that it's far simpler than some of the other products on this list, such as your Acumatica NetSuite. It's not really designed for 
for example, the companies that are going to be $50 million in revenue, their need for planning, their need for the ERP is going to be very different. Their needs for supply chain is going to be very different. So Odoo simplifies all of that so that you can easily implement it in the DIY mode. Uh, Odoo is also open source, so you don't have to spend as much on the licensing. You are still paying for the infrastructure and it has the subscription model for many different apps that are going to be pre-integrated. So you can get a lot more in the DIY mode. You can easily implement that. And now the other advantage with Odoo is going to be its multi-entity and global capabilities. It has globalization and localization for roughly 50 countries. So that could be powerful for companies that might be implementing, let's say, outside North America, outside Europe. For them, it's a huge plus because they might not find a lot of these products that might be available in North America. Some of the cons for Odoo is going to be the tendency to oversell of the Odoo uh, community overall. The Odoo community feels that Odoo can work with any company or any size companies. Odoo is not really designed for that. Other uh, con for Odoo is going to be just tendency to over customize for the larger companies. So since you have the open source model, it's very developer friendly. So developers are going to over customize the product. And sometimes that fires back, becomes a technical backlog for the companies to be able to maintain and manage over the period of time. So even though it might be cheaper from the licensing perspective, you might pay a lot more with the implementation and maintenance of the solution that might be poorly coded, poorly documented. Odoo is still a very strong product for the startups that might have budget in that under $30,000. Once you outgrow that, then you might have far richer options. But in the startup phase, Odoo is a very strong product. In this video and looking for deeper analysis of what factors we consider, make sure you guys check the article that we are going to be including with this video. Also, if you want to find more resources, we have our podcast called WBS Rocks that is available on Apple, Spotify, Google. So if you enjoy what I say, make sure you subscribe on those channels so that you don't miss any of the episode. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get alerted as soon as we are going to publish the videos. Also post your questions and comments and analysis and experiences. We want to hear all of that because we try to utilize that when we compile this, this list. The more insight that we get from you, the more informed our list is going to be. So we are counting on you. On that note, Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.